is deceit us. Die, monster! You don't belong in this world!
Christus vivit, Christus regnat, Christus ab omni malo te defendat, maledicti et excommunicati daimones, in virtute historum factorum de I nomi. I was like you once. But your God showed me another path. Messias, <laughs> Emmanuel, Sotet, Sabahot, Adios, Inkiros, Athanatos, Jehovah, Adonai. That's why the power of your God cannot destroy Because I am his chosen one. Ubi fuerent haec nomina et digna dei. Praetimus vobis at quelegamus vos ut non habietas. What is that a bear bastard? Neck bear, aliquod. Quod am quae maleficium nocere a. In cantionem nequae. In anima neck in corpore. Ages long past, there was once a warrior who was both noble and brave beyond all measure. His deeds of heroism and skill in combat were legend. His name was whispered within the hallowed halls of men for countless generations. Yet now his name is lost. Lost in the mists of time forever. It is said that destiny delights in the misfortunes of men, and so it proved true for Gabriel Belmont. For even after defeating the Lords of Shadow and ending their reign of terror, his soul was consumed by the very darkness that he sought to destroy, as that ancient prophecy foretold. Whomsoever defeats the Lords of Shadow will sit upon their throne to rule as the Prince of Darkness. But before fate had played its hand, and unknown to Gabriel, his beloved wife, Marie, conceived a son by him. The Brotherhood of Light warned her of that ancient prophecy and the terrible fate which lay before her husband. So, with heavy heart, she concealed her pregnancy. For it is written that only the blood of that lineage has the power to defeat the Prince of Darkness. Thus, when newly born, the child Trevor was hidden from his father and raised a holy warrior of the Brotherhood in secret, so that one day he would be ready to stand against his own blood, as foretold. That day would come, some 25 years later, for what had once been Gabriel Belmont was now a powerful vampire known as Dracula, the Dragon. The Brotherhood of Light fought against the onslaught of his dark armies, which laid waste to towns and villages across the land, but to little avail. Trevor was now fully grown to manhood, and the truth of his origin and destiny of the Belmont clan was finally revealed to him. So he set out to confront his father and end his family shame forever. But Trevor failed and was mortally wounded in the confrontation with his father. He was no match for Dracula's terrible power. Yet, as he lay dying, Trevor finally revealed his true identity. Dracula was driven mad with grief and rage over the revelation. He desperately sought to save his dying son by giving him his own lifeblood. 
but it was too late. Or so he thought. Dracula buried his son within the walls of his great castle, and then swore bloody vengeance upon the world. Raising an army of creatures beholden only to him, he struck with fury and merciless cruelty at humanity. He vowed to hunt God's children for all eternity. But fate still had one last card to play. Dracula's blood had power, and that power now coursed through the veins of his dead son, slowly reviving him over many years, until one night, he emerged once more into the world, not as a man, but as a creature like his father. What had once been Trevor Belmont was now gone forever. He was now a vampire like his father. Though he swore that he would not be like him, he would take the name Alucard. He would be a force for good, opposing his father's capacity for evil. In that very moment, Alucard swore to destroy Dracula. But fate had something else in mind. Meanwhile, Trevor's own son grew into a fearsome warrior with a reputation that far exceeded even that of his illustrious father. Simon Belmont knew little of his own lineage, nor his importance in the events to come. All he knew was that his mother had died at the hands of Dracula's minions when he was but an infant, and his father had been killed in single combat with Dracula. Found and raised by the people of White Mountains, Simon had but one purpose in life, to destroy Dracula for the murder of his parents. After years of training in the arts of war, Simon set off for Dracula's castle and a date with destiny. Once in the castle, Simon met Alucard, and knowing little of the true identity of his companion, joined forces with him. Blood bound them together, and fate took a hand once again, as finally they met their dreaded foe in mortal combat. Simon defeated Dracula with his whip, and yet Alucard sensed that all was not as it should be. Dracula would return. An unusual hiding place for the Prince of Darkness. Don't you think? Zobek, where have you been all this time?
And what of you? Why have you been hiding all this time? Gabriel. Don't you dare call me that. Isn't Dracul. What do you want, old friend? Satan's acolytes are readying for his imminent return. Help me stop him. Or you and I will become his favorite pets. For all eternity. Help me, and I can free you of your immortality.
Katie, come here. Look, Daddy, the man's moving. Stay away from me. Catherine, you come here! Now! Oh, oh, you stay away from me! It pleases me to see you recovered, old friend. Indeed, old friend. No! Relax. Our guest is just a little confused. I know what he wants. You see before you, the legendary vampire killer. Your old weapon, if you recall. The only weapon capable of ending your immortal life. You thought it destroyed. But you see, you can have the eternal rest you crave, after all. First, you must help me. Prevent Satan's return to the world. Then, I swear to you, I will deliver the fatal blow to your heart myself. And I am sure you will fulfill that vow. Since you sent Satan back to hell a thousand years ago, his human offspring, or acolytes as they call themselves, have been dormant. I suppose that they, that all of us, feared your wrath and great power. But not now. Now, even my bodyguard is more than a match for you. The Acolytes know you are weak, and are preparing for their father's return. Now they fear nothing. Don't they fear the mighty Zobet? Only you, in full possession of your powers, can defeat them. Follow me, please. We must find and destroy the Acolytes before they can finalize their preparations for Satan's return. It won't be easy. They govern the world of men from the shadows. 
Not even I know with any degree of certainty who or where they are. They won't come out into the light unless we can force their hand. The Acolytes must never know who hunts them down. The element of surprise will give us the advantage. Until you are at full strength again. And you don't know who they are or where they are? Do you know that this city is built upon the foundations of your castle? The Acolytes are focusing their attentions here for very good reason. Satan has specifically chosen this place for his return. He means to enslave you first, to humiliate you for what you did to him. Let's get on with it. The Acolytes must plunge the world into chaos before Satan can be summoned. Their activities leave spectral traces, which are difficult but not impossible to follow. This is the headquarters of a powerful pharmaceutical corporation. I suspect that one of the Acolytes is operating from there. The complex was sealed two months ago and is protected by magic. If I were to use my powers to see what is happening there, they would be able to trace it back to me within a matter of minutes. So, I will send you to the corporation via a portal. But we must be quick so as not to arouse suspicion. The longer the portal remains open, the more likely we will be discovered. Look for any sign of the Acolyte, but be careful. What are you waiting for?